This one's gonna go big! Hello and welcome back to the channel. Ace's Hidden Treasures Machines. The original Psycho Bastards. Now I have covered these on the channel before. There's, you have a look down the list there. That's just a search on the channel for the word Ace. I've covered their f uh, Fair Play High Low Gamble Reel. We've had one about Jurassic Trail. One about Open the Box. A couple about Pay Rise. A talk about the Pay Rise Free Lines. And such like. So I have kind of covered these on the channel and I have talked about them. But we'll have in this video a little bit of a potted history of what they are. And also I have got one ready to do a proper big streak. Because this has been one of the problems with the hidden treasures machines over the years in the world of emulation. Is that they tended not to behave quite as we remember them in terms of streaking. Now, I have a suspicion that back in the, the older era of FME, when the space tech, that ace technology that they used for all of these hidden treasures machines was called space, that was before the days of autoplay. So I kind of wonder if they maybe weren't getting enough money through them or they, you know, they weren't quite getting that normal play to get them ready for a streak. And you've always got the question around ROM revisions, maybe some dip switch settings that we've got wrong, all that sort of thing. So even though these have been emulated for a long time, and they are, of course, emulated in this new era of FME as well, they've always been a little bit elusive in terms of getting them to do the proper big, like, £50-plus streak that those of us who played these back in the day will remember. Well, it just so happened that a little while ago I was playing one of the Hidden Treasures machines and it did a natural streak. It was one that I had played a lot over the years and it had just got ready. The streak pot had got ready and it did a big streak for me. I thought, right, I'll take a copy of the RAM and GAM file there and use that for a future video. So what we will do in this video is we'll get... I've got one of these. I'm absolutely sure it's ready to streak and it should be a nice, big, juicy one as well. And what I will, of course, do is upload that to Desert Island Fruits so that anyone who wants to have a go with this themselves. If, you, if you're if you a certain vintage and you were playing these back in the early 90s, I'm sure that you will remember how these used to streak. If you've never experienced them, if you're a little bit younger, this will be a, perhaps a little bit of an eye-opener that we had machines going on streaks like this back in like the early 1990s. So as I make this video over 30 years ago, these things could go for 50 to 60 quid. They were absolutely crackers. So, what were they? Well, this is, uh, as best I can recall, this was the first one that Ace released called Play It Again. It had this new style of cabinet for them. It launched on the £4.80 token jackpot, and it was on a 20p play. And these turned up all over the place towards the, the later end of the £4.80 era. Remember that the £4.80 era kicked off in 1990. Jan 1990, we had the £4.80 jackpot came into force and ran through to January 93. I've got these in my head as being a little bit along in the four, maybe sort of mid to back end of the £4.80 era, these things came along and they had this uh, the notion of the hidden treasures. So it was well known at the time, machines like 777 Heaven and many others, you, know, you hold after nudges was the big one or with the boxes, if you held the boxes and that kind of thing, they, they would do a specific thing. Well, Ace kind of made that official with these in that when they did you a hold after nudges or there was a little cheat going on, on that display there, on the dot matrix display, you get a little jingle would play and the, there you go, the display would show watch for my hidden treasures. 
and there was some kind of thing that you could do to get a win at that point and these were a big thing if you were playing machines in whenever these first came out sort of 92 ish something like that 91 92 if you were playing machines at that time you will have very very clear memories of these because they were everywhere they had that crossover between the pubs and the arcades so with some machines you tended to really just see them more in arcades others were more pub machines these were everywhere they did the lot they they did pubs they did inland arcades they did seaside arcades they were everywhere and i think play it again was the first one quickly followed by i believe the twilight zone now the twilight zone is basically a clone of play it again what they've done to make it look a little bit different is they've put the band-aid thing in a circle rather than the sort of traditional real layout that they have on play it again but it's the same machine you can see the here by the way that these are running six pound roms these all got upgrades to six quid even though they started off on four pound eighty they got upgrades to six quid. They had a long tail on them. They stuck around for quite a while, particularly in the arcades. And Ace carried on making the hidden treasures machines through the six pound era. There are absolutely loads of them. These earlier ones were a little bit more low techy. This play again is, is kind of like a um, F777 Heaven clone, really. But what they, well, the clone, a knockoff, if you will. But what they've added here is this band-aid thing if you don't know how that works basically you've got 16 little lamps there for each stop on each of the three reels and if you line them up you get a bonus based on what the line is now i found out many many years later i didn't know at the time that these things were fuckable six ways from sunday they had all kinds of free wins on them at one point the lines were free you could do manipulation with the pots depending on what type of wins you were taking out with token and cash compensators and the end result was that a player who knew what they were doing back in the day when these were to be found in pubs and arcades could make an absolute fortune and this is not just because they had massive streaks in them they had a massive natural streak in them that was programmed in and even a numpty like me could hit that once in a while if we got lucky but beyond that there was all kinds of nonsense on them which gradually got chipped out or revised as time went by but the, the conversations that we've had god even going back to the fruit forums days and on we're having conversations about it these machines currently even over on desert island fruits was they were really really messable with there's there's one guy over at desert island fruits who famously any chance he gets he will mention that it was the aces hidden treasure machines that allowed him to pay his way through university like he paid for his board and his you know his, his food and all the rest of it he basically supported himself through a degree by going out in his sort of university town doing the hidden treasures machines because he had all the information on them i did not so i got slammed by these things time and time again i honestly got to the point and i'm not even exaggerating here i honestly got to the point where they were making me a little bit twitchy if i went into a pub and i saw one of these because i was completely addicted to fruit machines i was like well i'm going to play the fruit machine and i'll probably play it until i run out of money so if i saw one of these i would react quite differently to if i saw maybe a, a bar crest adders and ladders or perhaps a a mega screenplay or a bfm barcode which you know all had the, the other machines that, that were around at this time but which had a far gentler profile what i didn't know at the time was that i suspect and, and what was happening a lot of the time was that i was finding these machines in the wake of a player who had done them even where the wins are free 
what you do is, and I did cover that. If, if we go back, to, I think it was in the uh, pay rise, that one there. The pay rise part two, uh, the big profits video, where if you if you know what you're doing and you get the, the plane down the pots correctly and all that kind of thing, even though there's quite a lot of free wins in there, a spot the ball was famously a free win on earlier chips but you can basically leave the machine so that every single pot has been drained so it's got nothing in the current pot you've had the streak pot um you know the token and the cash compensators are both really low and the machine is utterly and completely on its arse and just needs filling up again and what the skilled player would do is they wouldn't empty it they'd leave a few coins in there and a few tokens in there so that the machine wouldn't error and go into an iou state and kind of essentially raise the alarm that something bad had happened they'd leave the machine with just enough cash and tokens in there for it to carry on working for a numpty like me to come along and fill it up i remember taking some biblical kickings on these utterly utterly disastrous kickings i think the aces hidden treasures machines were probably responsible for more early baths than any other machines back in the 480 and six pound eras you know those evenings where you've got enough money for the night out with your friends or whatever and you'll lose it all in in the pub early doors or i'd go into an arcade when i've, I've talked in the past i'd, I'd bloody have to cancel things with mrs degsy or say i couldn't see her again because i'd spunked all my money in the arcades uh, it would often be the hidden treasures machines that had done that to me as well they were ruthless they were really really dangerous machines and i i got to the point where where i would be a very very wary of them and if, if i go into a pub and the only machine they had was one of these i'd be a bit like oh dear this this could hurt and it often did but they could also go on a huge streak. In fact, I remember very, very clearly the very first time I had the full psycho streak on an Aces player again on the £4.80 jackpot in the early days of me and my mates being able to get out to the pub. I even remember where it was in Radcliffe. Now, this, this, this salubrious looking area here is just down the road from where I used to live in Radcliffe. And if we go back... That, that suspiciously vacant lot there. If you go back there. Let's go back. There we go. The Colliers. That is one of the pubs that me and my mates. You can tell it's a high class area there. Because they've got bars on the windows on the ground floor. But we used to drink in the Colliers now. And I'd, I'd have to guess 91 or 92 here. We were in the Collier. I mean, you can see there the building survived. It, I don't, I mean, it looks like it. And that to me there is obviously closed down. It looks like if you go back to a, it looks to me like that might still just about be a pub at that point. But if you come forward to 2015, you can see it's clearly closed down. And then, oh my word, it's uh, in the process of being knocked down. And then if we come forward to... Oh, it's all gone. But if we go back, 2008, it's still there. And it, like I say, you'd be going back to 91, 92. And we knew about the streak. Me and my friends knew that streaks were a thing. And we generally had streaks pegged to be about £30. A seven heaven would go for 30 quid. The May gaze of the time would go for 30 quid. That was about where, in our head, a streak was 30 quid. But this thing in there in the colliers went on a streak the likes of which we had never seen before and i'm gonna say it was pushing up into the realms of about 60 quid and i'm sure here that on earlier chips on these i think they changed it because back to change the rules that you could only have a bank of five times the jackpot which on the six pound jackpot was 30 quid i don't think that applied on the 480 jackpots i'm sure these things had a bank limit of like 50 quid on earlier chips on 480 chips and we i had like 50 quid in the bank and it was still paying it was piles and piles and piles of tokens a good amount of cash it was just holding after nudges for jackpots it was holding jackpots twice you know every other spin was was a win of a, a real full-on streak getting the lines on the band-aid there the whole the whole kit and caboodle we kind of thought it had 
broken. We almost thought, this is weird. Is there something gone wrong with this machine? It's almost like it's paying out too much. But the streak did come to an end somewhere in the region of the mid 50s, maybe 60 quid. Me and my mates got absolutely smashed off the tokens. I was buying drinks for them. They were giving me the money for the drinks. I tried to convert as many of the tokens as I could into cash through drinks or buying drinks for myself. Massive pockets full of money off the back end of an absolutely insane streak, the likes of which me and my friends had never seen before. And that was kind of the hook with these, is that Ace had programmed in this massive streak, notwithstanding all of the other nonsense that they were vulnerable to. We all knew that these things had a massive streak. So that made them dangerous in and of themselves, even if they weren't being done by players. They were dangerous, because if you think a machine, a £4.80 jackpot machine that can streak for 60 quid that's set to what? Dog shit pub percentages of 74, 76%. You don't need to be a genius to work out that the flip side of that coin is going to be some really, really painful takes. And then if you throw in the fact that they could be done by players and left dead, you can imagine the kind of kick-ins that these things could dish out. They would take a fiver off you in a blink of an eye. Fiver was nothing on these. Catch these things wrong. They could have a fiver, a tenner off you. You might get a couple of holes, a couple of nudges, and it would be gone. You could find yourself £20 down on these in no time whatsoever. You know, And this is back in the days when you could go out for a tenner. I have talked about this before. This is when you could still buy pints for not much over a pound. Uh, you know, food, you know, takeaway food was cheap. If, if you were being frugal, you could have a night out on a tenner. 20 quid was certainly enough for a full night out with loads of beer and food and pinball and jukebox and all the rest of it. But you walk up to one of these in a bad mood and it would have 20 quid off you in the blink of an eye. They were really, really dangerous machines in a way that other machines of the time were not. Like I say, there are loads of them. There was another one earlier on called a swap shop which had a weird little i'll find a picture of it one called swap shop which had a weird little symbol in the middle which was like a pseudo nudge thing and then at some point they they transitioned more and this was still in the four pound 80 era they transitioned more into mid techs and that would be the likes of uh where are we? we've got it yeah we've got um pay rise and open the box would be too i mean let's just shall we just fire that video up so we can have a look at it so there you are. In fact, we are running. You can see there we're running the... Well, sorry, that's on the £6 ROMs. But this started life as a £4.80 machine. And so you see there, they've gone for more of a mid-tech. So you've got the same win plan, you've got the same band-aid, but you've got exchanges on the features and all that kind of thing. All of these... We're running the £6 ROMs there. They, they got upgraded to £6. As time went on, we've got... Where's another one? We've got... a pay rise as well you get the idea and i'm sure that you will remember them if you were around at the time quite a number of them have been emulated over the years they were emulated in the earlier era of fme and we've had quite a few emulated in the current era of fme then going into the six pound era they introduced the concept of this thing here on Grand National, we had this winner's enclosure thing. This was a big win repeater. There's still hidden treasures. It's still got the hidden treasures thing going on. But you can see here that, that we've gone now in, into the era of a, a start to finish trail rather than more. So this is we're into the high tech territory now. But the profile of them was very similar. And they retained, this is the key thing, the DNA of these machines right through your original player again, through the sort of mid-techs of pay rise and open the box. Camelot was another one. You had Heidi High, pound for pound. There were loads of them. And then they, they went into the sort of more straight high-tech era with machines like Grand National. There was Crime Watch. There was Globe Trotter. Uh, quite a few others uh, finishing off with the likes of he said if we can fucking get the right thing with the uh, jurassic trail where is it there we are which i have again which is, has been covered jurassic trail which is another high tech there although for my money they had neutered the streak by this point 
maybe I just never had it, but I've, I've never had it in the emulator, and I've I never had it for real. This seemed to be more into the realms of the of the kind of traditional thirty pound streak. But certainly in the Grand Nationals uh, and Crime Watch was was one of its um, partners in crime at the time. Um, these had the the original sort of big streak on them. The other thing that changed sometime in the six pound era, certainly between Grand National and Jurassic Trail, was they went to a full sample pack. Ace were pretty late sticking with essentially really shitty bloopy bleepy style sound. They went into the space era, era with bloopy bleepy sound and they stuck with it. So even in the six pound era here where other manufacturers had either gone to uh, synth sound, JPM went to synth sound and then not long after that went, went to full sample packs. You'd had the likes of Mayday and BFM had started to use samples at the back end of the four pound 80 era. Right into the six pound era here, you had Ace using what was, and I remember thinking this at the time, that their machines sounded a bit shit because they were still using old bloopy bleepy sound hardware, but they did by the time of Jurassic Trail, Jurassic Trail may have been one of the first ones actually, they had moved to a full sample pack by this point, which did make their machines feel a little bit more modern. And then going into the £8 era, Ace for me were another manufacturer that really lost their way in the £8 era. The other obvious one on that would be Mayge, who for me completely lost. They were masters of the game in the £6 era. I've covered loads of the old brilliant Mayge AWPs on the channel. From the, the four, back end of the 480 and through the £6 era, they were absolutely on top of the world and then they just shit the bed completely uh, certainly from a numpty player perspective i know a lot of you know skilled players who knew all the uh, the tricks and tips made out like bandits on eight pound maygays but there wasn't much left for the rest of us and ace were another one that, that went into that category can't even remember if he kept the hidden treasures thing going the eight pound era was was very short-lived as well but they kind of got back on track in the ten pound era they got things back on track, but they were I think they were part of JPM by then, weren't they? I think back in this era, they were their own thing, but at some point they became combined with JPM. So they're I think they probably shared they seem to me to share coders and themes and all the rest of it. So from the ten pound era onwards, um well, certainly later on in the £10 era, Aces kind of became like another form of JPM, which wasn't a bad thing in and of itself, but it did mean that they lost that identity of their own and the whole hidden treasures thing had gone as well. That's my memory of it anyway. As always with these things, there are no... You can't just Google this shit. You can't just Wikipedia it. There's, there's no bloody online resources for it or anything like that. If, if you want a laugh, Try asking chat GPT about it. Because as, as, you, as we all know, with the way these fucking inverted commas AI, it's not AI, it's just machine learning. The fucking calling everything AI is bollocks. It's just machine learning. But uh, chat GPT and all these fucking, I will call them AI just for the sake of it. Well, famously, all they do really is they've just stolen the internet. They, they, they've just consumed everything that's been created by real people over years and years and years and you ask the things a question and they'll regurgitate stuff that other people have put real effort and thought into it does mean that they've got quite encyclopedic knowledge in some regards although they're very very prone to fucking things up as well because they don't know if what they're ingesting is real or not so they'd be very careful with these fucking ai things if you're trusting them on stuff because they have a terrible habit of making things up and repeating back bullshit but try asking them things about fruit machines they've got no fucking idea because the information isn't out there so the point I'm getting at there is, is that with a lot of this stuff, this is, this is as I remember it, and obviously the order that things happened in the little bit of the world around me back in the 1990s may not be the exact order that things were happening elsewhere. But this is, this is my broad memory of the timeline and how these things evolved, and also from the conversations that we've had on the Fruit Machine emulation scene, which kicked off back in 2001. So I hope I've got all that right. That, for me, is the evolution of the Hidden Treasures machines, starting with Play It Again and Twilight Zone in the £4.80 era, 
moving through the, those kind of mid techy style machines of your your pay rises and the, and the open the boxes, and then getting into more kind of high tech style machines. And if you will, more almost like a traditional start to finish trail fruit machines like Jurassic Trail and Money Mountain. And with that switch over to, to actual proper modern sound hardware, somewhere between Grand National and Jurassic Trail, they finally joined the rest of the fruit machine manufacturing world in using proper sample packs. And one final point here, these things did well. I mean, there is kind of the anecdotal side of things in that I just remember them being everywhere. Like I say, pubs and arcades, they were all over the shop. There were loads of them, particularly earlier on. They didn't seem to do quite as well in the Jurassic Trail era. But in those earlier days with the player agains and the mid-techs, they, they were a hugely common sight in pubs and arcades. But anecdotes are not data but we do have some data thanks to this long running coin slot thread over at desert island fruits that i have mentioned before i just had a little look through some of these earlier on to find some archived copies of coin slot like i say the magazine itself in the here and now is, is dreadful it's just industry shite basically it's all about how we should be gambling more. We'd all be happy if we gambled. And if the, the fewer rules and regulations there are about gambling, the better the world will be. There you go. I've just summarised coin slot for you. But what is more interesting are these archived copies that they do put in. We all find these quite fascinating over at Desert Island Fruits. And we've got one here from March of 1992 now remember in march 92 we would be in the final year of the four pound 80 era we had the six pound jackpot would begin in january 93 and you can see there by the way that the ace are advertising high flyer which was one of the mid techy uh, hidden treasures machines that would have been on the 480 jackpot at that time the top performer from ace coin you can also see just as a slight aside there we can see here that Barcrest have just released Nudge Banker and Graffiti on the that would again 480 jackpot, and they were using synth sound. So that does give us there a very clear de delineation because High Flyer was using the old fashioned bloopy bleepy style sound. At this point, Barcrest were at least onto synthesized sound. But if we go forward a little bit. And what they often have in these is machine charts. Here we are. So March 92. Can you see there AWP's arcades out of the top 10 machines? Ace have got four of them and they're all hidden treasures machines. So we've got Heidi High, Play It Again, which at this point was probably sort of getting on a little bit at number three. Twilight Zone, remember we've seen both of those there, there's Twilight Zone, there's Play It Again, so in March 92, them two are in the top 10 fruit machines in arcades, and down at the bottom there, Swap Shop, that one that I mentioned, which I didn't like, I always thought it was a little bit weird, that one, but that's in, in there as well, so we've got four of the top 10 are Aces Hidden Treasures machines, and also, I'm, I'm quite pleased that I found this one, if we fast forward a little bit, can you see there on the date... We are in March 93. So what, what are BFM doing there? That was, is that party time or surprise, surprise or something? It is, isn't it? That's party time, isn't it? So a, a, a circus circus having already hit the market. And they talk, there we are, party time. Oh, round the time, around the town is coming as well. Anyway, that's not quite the point, is it? I'm getting sidelined. If we go to the machine charts, remember... March 93 for this one. Can you see there? Look at what's at number one. It is Grand National by Ace, which is the one that we've got here. So we've got Grand National by Ace at number one. Then we've got Camelot. That was one of the mid-techie ones. And Pound for Pound. That was one of the mid-techie ones as well. So at the top ten there, you've got three out of the top ten. Big match by BWB, doing very well. You see there, Maygay, that, that triple whammy. You've got Monopoly, Monopoly Deluxe, and Pink Panther there as well. Barcrest not doing great. They've only got Super Hyper Viper in the, in the top ten there. So I'm sure there are more in there. Um, 
That thread is over at Desert Island Fruit, so if you remember over there, you can click on the links and have a little scan through for yourself. But you can see there that, that in, in those two year, those two sort of time points that we've taken, March 92, and one year later in March 93, so 4.18.6 pound era, we've got eggs there with, with four or three of the top 10 machines, and they are all hidden treasures machines because this was their thing that that was the ace thing for, for that a, a reasonably long period of time it was this whole idea of hidden treasures so if you want to have a look on the channel for, for some talk about the shenanigans that was available on these i have covered them in some of those videos there there's also that really interesting thing that they did with their fair play high low reel i've done a whole video about that it's kind of exactly what it sounds like which was this high low reel that picked the number before you gambled it would spin the high low reel and then it would do a don style sort of mirror across the reel and then you'd pick your gamble and it would just show you what it had already picked so it couldn't cheat you on the high low gamble you can also see there that that's got the three and six pound repeater up at the top as well so there are quite a few videos on the channel already about these ace machines but what i'm going to do for this one here is show you a natural streak this natural streak that just happened to come round when i was playing this machine a little bit ago and it is full disclosure it's on this one here on the Grand National, we have a lovely Pook DX for this one. This is one that I remember playing a lot. Um, I, I, well, even before I'd seen this, where we can see it's at number one. I'm guessing it was probably a new machine at this point. But even before I'd seen that, uh, Inland Arcade's Grand National at number one. I would have said, I think Ace did very well with this because there were a lot of them around. Just see there, by the way, Seaside Arcade, that's a slightly different kettle of fish, I suppose, because you've got different machines um, tend to stick around a bit longer out in the seaside. But you can see there they've got one at number two there, which is pay rise. But in the case of Grand National, I would have said I'm sure Ace did very well about uh, with this because these were a very, very popular site. They turned up, there were a lot of them in pubs and there were a lot of them in arcades. I do remember playing one of these quite a lot in an arcade in manchester and i was a particular sucker for this three and six pound repeater on this one it's called winner's enclosure but different machines had their own kind of themed variant on it but this thing if you got it right could go absolutely crackers it's kind of exactly what it sounds like it's a three or six so cash tokens or no and it can be triggered off the blue sevens there if the winner's enclosure exchange lamp is lit sometimes blue sevens are just a straight three quid but if the winner's enclosure lamp is lit you go you get your three quid and then you get the big or hopefully big winner's enclosure repeater now this machine is ready to streak. What I can't promise you is how it's going to do it because it has a whole raft of ways it can dump its streak pot. Sometimes it will just go bonkers on this winner's enclosure. I'm hoping we'll catch one of them, but to be honest with you, that, that does seem to be one of the rarer ones. But if we can catch it in, in the mood, it will go bananas off the winner's enclosure beyond that it's features all the time it's holds after wins it'll let us get to the three pound repeater at the end here and give us a repeat at the end of the trail um it'll do us um watch for my hidden treasures on on the reels all that kind of thing i'm hoping it's going to go for the high side of 50 quid that seems to be about what it's ready to dump so We'll have a run at it, see what it does. We can maybe just go back and try again if it behaves a little bit weird. But I'm, I'm like 99.9% .9 confident this is going to give us a nice streak. But I will upload this layout with this RAM and GAM file over at Desert Island Fruits. So you can have a play around for itself. If you played these back in the 90s, you can relive, relive those days of the crazy A streaks. If this was before your time, 
as I said before, there might be a little bit of an eye opener because we we were taking fifty and sixty quid out of machines back when the jackpot was only four pound eighty or six quid, which kind of gives lie to this idea that you need these massive jackpots for big wins because we all knew thirty years ago that these fuckers could go for fifty and sixty quid when the mood took them. So with all that said, sorry, a lot of waffle there, but these were significant machines. I think if, if you were around in the early 90s, you will know what a big impact these had on the fruit machine landscape. So I think it's worth having a chat about them. But that is enough chat now. Let's do the playing. So let's just put a fiver in. Now, one thing that I have found is that your best bet is to let it trigger the streak pot naturally. If you try and kind of do a semi-force... It can get in a bad mood with you and it doesn't seem to really like it. So you've kind of got to play it um, normally. We've got it there, haven't we? So what I will do here is... See, now we have got Winner's Enclosure at the top there. But if, if you kind of force it when it doesn't want to do it... I, I would gamble on this. We haven't got an exchange there. So we'll certainly gamble on that. But if we get a ship... Now, now I will gamble on that. But if I would have got a set like a 5, 6, 7, 8 there... I would have actually exchanged into the feature because sometimes it gets a little bit funny with you if you try and force out the winner's enclosure. But we do now have the winner's en enclosure lit. So if we win this gamble, we are going to go into the winner's enclosure. So we get our three quid. Sometimes the street pot comes a a pretty much straight away like this. Other times it can still want a five or ten quid before it activates it. But Oh, there we go. This. <laughs> there we go. This was the big excitement. The big winner's enclosure. And it doesn't really... Fa you don't even get a... Oh, there we go. You don't even get like a jackpot sequence or anything. It's just firing money into... Oh, 12. Oh, there's more though. Yeah, like I say, this is, this is... We're just getting started. Oh, there's a jackpot on the reels. Look at that. Now, if you were playing... Obviously, you'd just take that. If you were... Oh, we get a jackpot. There we are, the same bloody, the same jackpot sequence they've been using since Play It Again. With the same shit bloody sound and music. They were a little bit behind the times by this point. Were Ace, so... Oh, come on, this, this will have more in it. This is not done. There we are, so there's our watch for my hidden... Oh, the Alpha's gonna have gone for a Burton there, but that, that's a watch for my hidden treasures. So there we go, that's a nice number, and we've got the winner's enclosure. It was always very disappointing if you get to the... Like, if the winner's enclosure wasn't lit there, I would actually exchange for the feature, because without the winner's enclosure, it's just a straight three quid. Whereas if you go on the feature, you can get, like, if you get to the end and get three pound plus repeat chance, at least you have a repeater. So there we are, that's another three quid. Let's see, it, it, this should still be going, this should still have more to do. Oh, you bastard. Little bit of a shame there. We, 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 we should be well into the streak pot, though. But it's got to be up there. Oh, look at that. Now, this, this could go wrong here. See there? No winner's enclosure. Obviously, you'd do that, because, I mean, if you were playing this for real, you'd know that you were into the streak pot. But you can see there, it didn't want to give us a winner's enclosure on that. Uh, I would expect another win within the next few credits. Come on. We'll put another fiver in. There we are. Yeah, just spacing that out a little bit there, wasn't it? Uh, we're going to have to go. We can get a feature. In fact, what we'll do there is just go for the feature. Dun, 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 dun. See, this, 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 uh, this, this sound, sound and music was very, very much antiquated. At this point in time, uh, Ace Ace Machines... Oh, come on, don't kill me. Ooh, that was a bit hard. Ace Machines were the only ones left that were using the, this kind of bloopy bleepy style sound and it did mark them out among the sort of premium 20p play machines. It did mark them out um, as, as needing to be updated. So we haven't got there. Can you see? We haven't got the winner's enclosure. So I'm doing what I would have done for real here, which is actually exchange into the feature. Uh, find the Oats is just a little... Um, it's like a, a spot the ball type feature. So we'll carry on, we'll carry on round. Ooh, we better not. Oh, look at that. That seemed, that seemed rather harsh. It's 
sometimes does play up a little. We, we can go back to the RAM file and try again. Once in a while, it does play a little bit funny with you. If it starts the streak kind of straight out the gates as it did there, sometimes it can go a little bit wonky. It generally, because I've, I've had a few test runs at this, generally speaking, if the streak starts after about five or ten quid in, that's when it's going to do the big one. But we, we can go back and try again. That's fine. Where's that going? Is that a question? No, so we, we were into the decent... St oh, where's that going? Oh! Poor fucking absolute bastard. Remember, we've only put a tenner in, so... This should still... No. Uh, what have we got up there? Have we got a... No, we haven't got a... There we are. So we're going to have to go for a normal feature. So it came out strong, didn't it? With a big winner's enclosure. But it's just gone off a little bit since then. Mystery advance. Where's that going? Oh. Oh. It's gone pumpy, hasn't it? It might have just decided. This will be. It will, We'll go back and do it again. Because it's gone off the boil here, hasn't it? This, But this will be a very interesting case study. Oh, there you go. In how it can play really quite differently from exactly the same RAM and GAM file. We've seen that in quite a few videos on the channel. When I was trying to get the streak on the Mega, the sort of Great Escape and Clones, where I didn't have to go back like four or five times. To, they see £30 bank limit. I had to go back four or five times to get the bloody thing to behave correctly. So this, is, this has been a little bit of a weird one. This I think we're still going. Yeah, we're still going. Winner's enclosure, good. Okay, we have got a winner's enclosure there, but obviously we're going to gamble on the one. So we've gone through the bank limit now. It will start collecting the bank as it goes. But I'll definitely go back to the RAM and GAM file and just have another go, and you'll see it do something. It'll streak, but it'll do it. Oh, there's another three quid. It will do it in a different way. Quite how the internal logic on these works. It does show that there are some kind of sort of random or pseudo-random elements in there. Um, well, obviously, we've got a feature, haven't we? I would really expect this to be 50 plus. This should be over 50 quid if it's the, if it's the proper full streak. Nutrix, can't that sometimes, even though it's the first feature, can't that sometimes be okay? I'm sure I've got that in the head from somewhere. Where's that going? Oh, no. Oh. I'm very happy about that, you know. It's always, uh, it's always the red seven up there. You see, yeah, it, it's been a bit weird about it, but we are clearly in the street pot here. One thing it does on these, uh, these later ones, it adds the bank up a lot quicker. I'll go back to uh, play it again and show you when you get a, a win on play it again. It adds the win up a lot slower. Uh, almost to the point of it being slightly irritating. So they, they sped that up on the later machines. They, they kind of doubled the speed at which it, it adds your wins into the bank. So I would think that I would expect this to still have a little bit in it, you know. Let's see. Oh, we've got a lot of gambles needed to get to anything there, aren't we? Yeah, okay, that was not going to happen. I would expect us to have a, 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 another tenor or so in here. Oh, there we are. So there's our hidden treasures. So that, that's just to hold them all. I just hold them all and press cancel. There we are. So we, come on, winner's enclosure. No! It's just a straight three quid. That's a little bit annoying. I mean, this is not bad. This is still not a bad result, obviously. You'd be, you'd be quite happy with this, but it's... It's not quite play ball here. Any, any more for any more? No. I'll give it another... Once you go, like, a fiver... Without a win, you'd 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 kind of say it's all over. Ooh, so that's obvious. Want no? Okay, we've got a nine to gamble on. We have got a winner's enclosure there. Any chance? Fuck. Yeah. I was I was blinded by winner's enclosure there. Uh oh, what's up there? Okay. Uh, one, two... No, it's going to be... It's just going to be a feature again, isn't it? It's, it's stretched this out slightly strangely. Shall I collect? No, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I've got it in my head. That, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, this one, I remember. Oh, fuck. That wasn't very... That wasn't very good, was it? That... I, I've not done myself... Uh, oh, 
not done myself well there, haven't no. So it's obviously it's gonna be what uh, one, two, th no. It's, there's got to be a yeah. There's got to be one of them up there, aren't there? And we've got no winners enclosure, so really we just want to win a gamble there and get into the feature. Find the oats, no good. That's the kind of you'll get what it wants to give you. We haven't even got to the end of the trap. Oh, where's that? Is that pulled up? Oh, there we are. Six quid. Another jackpot. So we've kind of got the numbers, haven't we? We have gone over 50 quid, but it's done it in a, a little bit of an unusual way. I'm, I'm sure, you know, I'm, was it 50 quid or 60 quid the bank limit used to be on these? I, I am, I'm so sure in my head that, that when that play it again went bonkers in the Colliers back in Radcliffe, I had a 50 odd quid in the bank or 50 quid in the bank or something. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm not... See, now for that one there... I think you just exchange. Can you see? We've already got the exchange. Ten's a good number to gamble on, but then we've got to gamble again to, to get back to the exchange. I don't really see any reason there. And it can mug you off whenever it wants to anyway, so... Oh, now Nudge Bolt. Yeah, that's not a bad feature, is it? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm half tempted. Oh, another jackpot, though, another jackpot. There we go. It's, it's padded this one out. But in the end, we have got there, haven't we? Oh, there we go. There we go. And this, of course, for me, is so much better. It's like the bigger the jackpot got on AWPs, the more anticlimactic it got. I mean, they kind of fixed it a little bit with the concepts of mega streaks and that sort of thing. But all the mega streak did, in a way, was just replaced the natural streak that we used to have because. It's far more fun to get win after win after win and feature after feature after feature. And as you can see here, uh, are we going to get super, super ambitious and go for winner's enclosure there? No, we're not. I think that, that's not going to happen. So I actually prefer the, the way that they did it here on, on these older machines where, where a streak really felt like a... Ooh, run marks, okay. Where a streak really, really felt like a major event. Because this is essentially running with a, a 50, 60 pound jackpot, isn't it? Shall we have a go at... What do you reckon? I just don't want to get... I just don't want to get a three. Oh, there we are. We've got to the end. Three quid. There we are. So, the numbers here, despite that funny little patch in the middle, the numbers here have finished off pretty good, haven't they? And we do get a repeat chance here as well. No repeat you just want to play, like I say, if you go four or five quid without a win, that's where, uh, certainly that's how I, I always used to, to go on, on the the assumption that four or five quid without a win, and I think that might be it now. You can see how the, how the, the whole kind of tone of the machine just changes. I think that is it. Yeah, I think that, I think that's our lot. Ooh! Final, final little throw of the dice here. That, that'll be a feature. Let's just see what it wants. If this feature mugs me off, though, I think we might be at, at our... Um... Ooh. Ooh, there we are. We're still alive. Oh, there. So it has. Right, okay. So what we'll do is we'll collect that out. So you can see there. Now, it has stretched it out a little bit. But the payout there, the total payout... Oh, we're into the cash now. There we go. See there, a lot of that was tokens. Like, what, about 40 quid of that was tokens? That was the thing with these. The uh, the streaks on these could be very, very token heavy. Which, if you were in an arcade, was not a problem. If you're in a pub with only one machine and you are by yourself, you know, with the best will in the world, you're not drinking 40 quid's worth of beer, are you? If you had a couple of mates with you, you, you could do... A surprising amount of damage to a token streak, depending on, on how pissed you were prepared to get. But yeah, it could be a little bit of a problem. In single machine pubs, when you got a very token heavy streak, you were left a little bit uh, with the problem of what to do with all the tokens. I taught, there's a video on the channel, let's have a look, I've covered all this stuff. Whole video about tokens there and fucking... What a jip they were. So you can, if you haven't seen that one, you can watch that. I think that kind of sums it up there. Gambling real money to, to win. Pretend money. That was a whole scam all by itself, wasn't it? Right, that's finished now. So 
Our total out there was £64.20 for 19 quid up. If we look at the profit and loss, you can see there, I am £45.20 and 20 pence up on an, you know, a six pound jackpot machine so that tells us there that we've had a very solid streak i think that the amount there is perhaps slightly larger because it did stretch it out a bit shall we have another go we'll we'll, we'll go back to the ram and gam file and we'll have another crack at that once and see what it does second time round here we are, the miracle of emulation. Here we can now just do exactly the same, uh, of the same starting point again, but that is not to say that the machine will play the same. Shall we? So we'd already had, there we are. Let's just do a couple of different nudges and things. And let's see what it wants to do now. Uh, okay, there we go. Let, let's take a win at that point. And so, so that's obviously going to give us an exchange because we've got the uh, three overlaid symbols there. So let's see which path this one wants to go down. What I really want to do, if possible, though, is get a massive, great winner's enclosure. But for uh, considering that's like the marquee repeater. Oh, there we are. It does, it does, it seems strangely reluctant to do a massive repeater off the winner's enclosure, which I think is a little bit of a shame. Because it's super, super exciting when it happens, but... The good news is, you can have a go at this yourself. Grab it from Desert Island Fruits and play around with it to your heart's content. It will do it. At some point, it will do it. You can get 40, 50 quid just off, off the winner's enclosure. It's very, very nice when it happens. But we'll... For now, we've got a feature and a repeat, so we'll go down that path. Ooh! Mystery had found... Well, there we go. So that's a nice start, isn't it? We've got a £3 at the end of the trail. We got a repeat, and that went for a jackpot. That's fine. And then let's just see. Well, we, can we get... There we are. That's a bad number, though, isn't it? There's no C there. Now, what I'm saying... There's no winner's enclosure, so we, we've got nothing to kind of gamble for there. We've got nothing to really go for. Because we're, we're kind of in a worse spot. Ooh! That's really, really skanky, that roll even. Even when the machine is streaking, it'll kill you on that. I, I don't know why it feel, feels... An, oh, there we are. So that's there, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so one winner's enclosure. No winner's enclosure. Once again, there's no winner's enclosure exchange. So we, we no point gambling. Up to, oh, pick. You know what? I should have taken pick a win. Sorry, pick a win is that. Uh, I, I fluffed it there. Uh, pick a win is a really easy dapple around the symbols. I should have collected pick a win there because you can always get blue sevens off it, and it will give you um, it'll give you winner's enclosure if it wants to. So sorry, that was my fault. There we are. We're through to the end again, though. So I do apologise, I've stuffed it a bit there. One good sign, by the way, is it repeating. When it's not streaking, it's incredibly tight. With the uh, repeat... There, we've, we've won a roll even. Well, that wasn't very good, was it? Why did I have all the numbers here? They have to give me a fecking 12 and kill me. Ah, uh, we should have a... There's no yellow up there. Okay, we'll, we'll do it like that. So we have got a winner. That's some gambling to get to winner's enclosure, though. Fucking hell. Let's do a little bit of, let's just try and force the issue a little bit to get a winner's enclosure. See if we can goad it into giving us a, oh look, it's just dropped a winner, uh, feature. Should we see if we can goad it into a, into a big winner's enclosure? Where's that going? Find the oats, we're not too fussed about that. Run wild. They all had these on them uh, around this, this time period. That was one of the, the less annoying ones. Could go up and down, it felt like five minutes. They needed some better hardware at this point, eh, still. They need some better sound hardware, that's for sure. Oh, look at that, you bastard. That's not a bad result, actually. I really want to try and sort, sort of tip it over into giving me a nice big winner's enclosure here. Come on, you boy. It's just interesting to see if it would give me a hold after nudges there. For uh, uh, It's going to be... 
It's going to be that, isn't it? Winner's enclosure at the top. But we've got to... Oh, there we are. There we are. Right, okay. Can we get a big winner's enclosure? That would be nice. Any chances? Oh, there's a six. There's a six. Right, okay. Good, good. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, this is my fav one of my favourite ever repeaters, this. Come on. Yes, there's a three. Okay. Come on. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Come on. Oh, another three. There we are. So that's cash at least. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, unlucky. Yeah. They're good when they get going, then. That, that, there we are. So, what, for some reason, the alpha's just bombing out when it does that. Oh, no winner's enclosure. We have got a pick a win, though. So, what I'll, I should have collected this last time. I'll collect pick a win. If it's feeling really nice, it'll put. A, no, see, see there, it's blue sevens. But it doesn't necessarily have to give you the winner's enclosure. It's like a, a bit of a toss up here if we'll get. Oh, no, it hasn't. It hasn't. It's just a straight three quid. But you can see there, it's gone through the bank limit much quicker this time round, hasn't it? Oh, look at that. There we go. No exchange. We've got to gamble on a seven. <sighs> go on, go on, go on. Come on. Oh! <laughs> I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. I had my eyes on a bloody winner's enclosure. I was determined to get another winner's enclosure. Right, there we are. Come on. Put the winner's enclosure in. Yes, higher than a three. Yes, there we are, another winner's enclosure. There we are, and we're bashing through that bank limit now. It's what we like to see. It's a little bit more concentrated, this one. It's, it's fascinating to me how you can get these different results. Oh, no, from exactly the same Ram and Gam file. Uh, what have we got there? It's going to have to be, uh, it's going to have to be mixed sevens, isn't it? Uh, we've got to gamble once for an exchange? No, that was a... Let's sly. Not quite sure what uh, function was being fulfilled there. This is a little bit of a... This should have more. This really should have more. There we are. We've got a two to gamble on, so there's a good chance on winner's enclosure here. There we go. There we are. Another three quid. Let's just see if we can get a little bit of repeatage going on here. We'll dump those tokens out first. Sticking to its £30 bank limit. Oh, there's another three. That's good. There we go. This is the way to get a payout of a fruit machine, isn't it? This, this is what made them have... Oh, no, I've said before, I don't think I would have even got addicted to the modern shite. These things were... At the risk of state and the obvious, these things were very, very Moorish. I think we're going to go for that. I think we're going to go higher than a four. There we are, another winner's enclosed. There was nothing as, so exciting as just knowing you were on that streak, knowing the streak pot was activated, and it was just going to be win after win after win after win. Oh, no, it... Not quite giving us the repeats there, but fair enough. Ooh. I think this should... We're at f maybe a little bit more. I'd kind of want... There we are. I'd kind of just want a bit more out of this. We'll go there like that. Uh, oh, we have got... A, there's a lot of gambles. Oh, come on. Two more gambles for winner's enclosure. <gasps> we're going to go for that. We're going to go for that. Come on. There we are. Another winner's enclosure. Excellent. There we are. Any chances? Oh, another three. There we are. Sometimes, like I say, it will, you see all the winners' enclosures wins that we've had here. Sometimes it will once in a while. Oh, there we are. Look at that. It will just do them all in one, and it go absolute. Shall we go for that? I can I can hold them all and press cancel and get three nudges, or I can go for a really optimistic jackpot nudge. It hasn't worked. That was very, very stupid. I don't know why I did that. I'm getting slightly carried away. Uh, we have got a feature there. But you can see here that the, the streak is solidly coming in at over 50 quid. Exactly how it wants to do it is subject to a little bit of variation. But you've basically got 50 quid plus in the bank here on the streak. Which is an impressive number for a £6 jackpot machine. Where's that going? There we are to the end. We're a little bit more cash heavy. Can you see here? It's done the it's done the street quite differently as well, hasn't it? We're already into the, it's far more cash focused this one. Exactly the same starting point, but we've had a different 
a, a sort of pace to the streak and we've had a different kind of structure of streak as well in that this one's done it more cash heavy compared oh oh no now did we have to do that i think there should still be i think there should still be a little bit in it oh come on come on baby bit more any chance we haven't had to put quite as much in on this one so oh is that it oh that'd be a sh come on give me another feature one final feature no i think that might be it you know it's just run out of puff a little bit quicker this time hasn't it oh come on uh we've got to win two gamble oh, there we are so we can certainly get a feature we've got no winners enclosure so let's see oh now pick a win pick a win he's dead that's a guaranteed three quid and if we're lucky we'll get a winner's enclosure he doesn't seem to like putting in the red seven i don't know if oh no winners enclosure i don't know if it's a different chip or what but this one just doesn't seem to want to put the red seven in there and i do remember pick a win quite often being a decent bet for uh for the red sevens for the jackpot but this one i don't know why just doesn't seem to like doing it i think that might be it you know uh, shall we just risk another pound oh well, we're, there we go uh it's gonna have to be singles we've got no winners enclosure so i think i'm just going to exchange there because i lose the exchange if i gamble once find the oats i'm afraid he's not doing it he really wants to give me find the oats doesn't it Clem. Oh, it's up to the end. Yes, it is. There is another three quid. Okay, so... Oh, it's still repeating. That's a good sign. When it's repeating on the feature, that is a good sign. Uh... Oh. I have gone back to this Ram and Gam file so many times. Not just for this video, just because I enjoy it. I, like, I've kept a copy of it in, in my FME folder with this layout so I can just load this up whenever I want to and just play around with the streak. It just, on a purely entertainment basis, I just find it very, very entertaining. And very, very nostalgic as well because, like I say, even, even the sun shines out of a dog's arse Sundays. And I, like a numpty like me, would once in a while, you'd catch the big streak on these. And it would be very, very satisfying. But with that, that terrible, terrible downside that I talked about before. Because these things would hammer you when the mood took them. Uh, had very a, a great number of terrible, terrible, terrible results on these. And a, a lot of evenings that, that were over before they'd even started. Shall we collect... What's it going to do there? Oh, come on. Oh, four quid. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I just put... That was... You know what? That was a bit... That was a bit rash because we're on the arse end of the streak there. I really should have collected something there. I just I just pushed that too far. That that was stupid. And that, that's hurt my numbers there. I should, I should have collected that fucking nudge jump thing. That is my fault there. I've, I've hurt myself there. When, when, you, when the, the streak is puttering out like it is here. And that's it there. I, th I think I've stuffed myself on that last win. So that was... Let's just collect that out. So we're, we're just shy. I think we're, we're, we're just shy of 60 quid. I think that's possibly ended up in, in terms of profit and loss a little bit worse than the other one. To be honest, because I just stuffed it up at the end. It went off the boil, and I just got a little bit optimistic, or a little bit greedy would be a better word, at the end there. Let's just see where the meters land. Yeah, there we go. £59.20 out for 21 quid in. For a profit of 38 quid, that's a bad one. That is actually a bad result there. I didn't play that very well either. Uh, you can walk away from this one. If, if you catch the streak just right, you can walk away from this Ram and Gam file over £50 in profit. And once in a while, you will get that bananas, massive, great winner's enclosure. We've seen it twice. I won't go back again. I'm mindful that this video is already far longer than it should be. As I say, I will put a link to the thread for this video over at Desert Island Fruit, I will also upload this layout with that Ram and Gam file that you've just seen me play twice. So you know you've got it ready to streak. 
and you can play it as many times as you want and see all the... You can see there, just with those two runs at it, we got quite a different streak experience and there are more ways it can do it than that. My favourite is the super mega big winner's enclosure, which I do remember these things doing once in a while back in the day. So that's kind of covered the, the hidden treasures machines for you from the very earliest ones through to these later ones. And then I think the, these ones here, I think, where, where is it? Jurassic Trail, Jurassic Trail and Money Mountain. I think were, were two of the really quite late ones. And then we went into the eight pound era and the Ace changed their whole style of machines and the, the hidden, I think they kept the hidden treasures text around, but the, the sort of profile of the machines really did change for me at that point. And I, I didn't like them in the eight pound era. I did not like Ace machines in the eight pound era. And then coming into the 10 pound era, they, they were kind of like a whole different proposition at that point because they'd either been consumed by JPM at that point, or they had JPM coders working for them, something like that. That's my version of the timeline anyway. It's the best I can manage from my adult brain from 30 plus years ago. So I hope I've got it right for you. And I hope you've enjoyed this video as well. And on that note, I am going to shut up now. So thank you very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this video and I will catch up with you next time. But for now it is, goodbye.